Super excited to be here to be talking a little bit about making magic indoors. Um, for a lot of those who are, might be familiar with my work, um, might observe that I absolutely love shooting indoors. Um, shooting indoors uh, can be quite challenging, especially when you have tight spaces um, and also you might feel a little bit um, constricted um, or restricted in terms of where your windows are, where the light's coming from, etc. And it can present a little bit of a challenge. Um, however, I'm excited to share a couple of tips as well as um, how I use um, my uh, lenses as well as my uh, creative thinking to make some magic indoors. So let's get started. Okay, so just a little bit about me. Um, I am a lifestyle fine art photographer uh, based in California, Northern California in Sacramento. Um, I am an educator at Click Photo School. I teach a full workshop called The Imperfectionist. It's all about rule breaking. Um, I'm also an author of a self-paced class um, called Shadows and Light. So I geek out a lot about light and shadows, obviously. Um, I've taught at various conferences, Click Away, Reset, Imaging, WPPI, Lens Baby, etc. Um, I'm also the co-founder of uh, the virtual retreats called Call Me Artist Retreat um, and an ambassador for uh, Miller's as well as Lens Baby. Okay, so let's talk about making magic indoors and getting started. Right. Um, so we when we approach with shooting indoors um, or, you know, it could be outdoors or anything, but especially with sh shooting indoors, um, thinking about your lens choice, um, stepping back and observing and making a note of how um, the light enters the space or where you are um, in the space compositionally, um, thinking in terms of where you are with respect to your subject, with respect to the light, with respect to any other um, objects that you might be having in the space. Um, so stepping back and observing of what is it that you're exactly trying to achieve there um, or coming up with a story or an idea or your vision is absolutely important. With regards to lens choices, you have to think about focal length um, and what is one of your favorite lenses you might, you know, you might want to use um, for shooting indoors. Um, for me, as an example, I absolutely love using Edge 35 and I've been using this um, Edge 35 as well as uh, Edge 80 um, for almost four plus years now. Um, but for the past two plus years, I've been really using my Edge 35 quite a bit and um, touch wood, I'm, you know, I'm yet to get bored out of it. So it, it's really never happened yet. Um, that being said, I do use other lenses as well. Like um, I really love using my Sol 45, my Omni filters, which is not really a lens, but it's more of an attachment. Um, but they can help me with um, achieving um, my creative vision as to when and uh, you know where I might require them. Um, however, my go-to has always really been the H35, um, just because I personally feel that it's really versatile for the soft and the creamy and the dreamy feel that I desire in my images. Um, okay, so lens choice is super important, stepping back and observing. And this feels that it's just so basic, but it is really the more um, critical part of of how I really work. Um, observing and looking at where you are um, can really just make uh, the storytelling happen um, and can really just help you to think, okay, do I really just need to step a couple of steps more behind? Do I need to take, you know, take a few steps forward? Do I, how do I need to move with respect to my subject so that I can optimize or um, make the best of the scenario, the lighting, etc., of where you're shooting, um, especially in tight spaces. Um, the story, whether you are, you know, taking portraits, you're focusing on details, environmental portraits, what you're trying to achieve or what are you trying to do um, is another thing that is important. Um, making uh, magic indoors. So having a clean frame. Um, 
so for me, I personally like uh, images that are a bit more on the clean side of things. Um, and what I do to achieve something like that from the storytelling perspective is I like to remove any objects that I feel don't belong there. Um, and, you know, if you are someone who really likes a uh, a documentary approach you don't really have to um, move the scene around too much but intentional being intentional and being purposeful of what you want to include as well as what you want to take out in the frame is something that is important to keep thinking um, especially when you're shooting indoors so um, you know it, it also you know we'll talk a little bit about woman based and um, how to approach something like that from a storytelling perspective how However, um, at least for me, like I said, for most of my images, I like to uh, make sure that my frame is clean. Um, everything that I have in the image going on um, is very purposeful, is very intentional and has a meaning and a reason for why it's in the frame. Um, making magic indoors, paying attention to the light. Um, so you know, whether you're shooting in your own home, and I know I've been talking quite a bit about shooting in your own home, especially, um, you know, because that is something that you're always there. You know, not everyone has access to studios or indoor spaces. Um, and shooting outside with uh, new spaces can actually be a bit more trickier um, than shooting indoors in your own home, right? Because in your own home, although it can get a little bit repetitive when you're doing the same thing, um, it still feels a bit more familiar so that you don't really get into any surprises. You know where the light's coming from, you know where the windows are, you observe as to uh, when's the sunrise happening, in which room, which direction the room is facing, etc., etc. Now, when you are in shooting in new places, um, whether it is in an indoor studio that you have just rented or whether it's a commercial indoor space, um, you know, try to see if you can make uh, either a mental note when, you know, if you don't have any access to that space prior to you shooting there, you know, see if you can ask for photos of how the space looks like. Go to the website to see, you know, is it is it a dark space? Are the walls really super dark? How is the light entering the space? What do you, what what will happen if I shot, you know, summer with summer light? What will happen if I shot sunrise during the winter? What if I... So think about the possibilities of what can happen within the space that you're shooting so that you are mentally prepared as to observe what is the light physically doing in that space and you have a better idea of um, how to make the best of that lighting situation of where you're shooting at. Um, light and compositional decisions. Um, how is the, so light to me is a really important compositional element um, and that's how I see it. Um, so thinking about how the subject is interacting with the light, right? So is, you know, where is, where should my subject be positioned with respect to light in the space? Um, should the, you know, should, do you want to use side light? Do you want to use flat light? Do you want to uh, use backlight in the space? Then if I use backlight, what happens to the mood or the story of the image that I'm trying to make over here? Um, so giving attention or paying attention to those sort of um, situations that you are in and thinking about where your subject is with respect to the light in the space is important. Compositional rules, right? So think about your basic compositional rules. Am I having, you know, am I doing center composition? Am I filling the frame? Am I just taking uh, a portrait of the subject? Do I want an environmental shot? Do I need to step behind? Do I need, you know, am I doing rule of thirds? Am I framing my subject with something? So think about your compositional rules and don't be afraid to change things up if need be as well. Um, think about focus, right? So especially when you're shooting with manual lenses, understanding that part and studying composition in terms of with respect to focus is important too. So when it comes to focus, think about, are you trying to photograph details over there? Um, are you trying, to, so what aperture should I shoot at? Are you trying to fo focus on, um, you know, do you want more um, of the subject shown in the image? So where should my focus fall? Even though you're really manually adjusting your focus, you need to really have a better idea as to what part of the image or what 
part of the subject you're hoping that the focus falls on. Okay, so getting out of a creative rut. Now, manual lenses, at least, you know, like I said, for me, have time and again really helped me to get out of a creative rut. They, um, especially during this time of the year when I feel um, really, you know, just burnt out or overwhelmed with my client work or it's towards the end of the year and I'm trying to reflect and trying to, you know, just think about like, what are my goals for next year? Or, you know, maybe I'm just tired of creating something that is very, um, you know, just feels like it's very similar to what I've already created. Um, picking up your manual lens, whatever that is. Like, for example, I don't personally use, um, you know, the, the twist quite a bit. But maybe if I pick it up and, you know, practice with my twist, um, for the next 30 days could be a really great creative exercise to get to learn about how the lens operates, which situations will that lens really um, be useful for me in terms of uh, telling the story or creating the mood that I might be after, right? So spending some time with that lens that you're working with, um, as well as just playing around with um, light and, you know, your subject, whoever you're shooting, um, really just helps you to, forces you rather to be present in the situation um, and really just helps you to play around to get out of that creative rut. Um, manual lenses to me personally have been um, just an amazing tool as a creative tool to have in my um, lens and gear toolbox. Um, it just feels that, you know, when you are in an oversaturated market um, with client work as well or personal work as well, um, they have really just helped me to stand apart because I personally feel that no one really just uses that lens in the same way and everyone really has such a different style of shooting. So you really just see something, you know, completely different when um, each of you is picking up that lens and trying to create something with your manual lens. Um, it really, like I said, you know, it really just helps me, I feel, to stand out of the crowd as well as giving that unique and creative identity, um, even with my client work. Okay, so we're going to go through just a little bit of image study um, so that we can see how I have applied some of that uh, lens choices, uh, light, as well as composition, uh, all of that combined in my image and how the visual flow really works in my images. Okay, so for example, uh, in this first image over here, getting creative with light, um, I personally love uh, using manual lenses, lens baby lenses especially, um, to get some really beautiful light haze as well as light flares in my work. Um, you know, just when I see this kind of like rainbow flares or, you know, light haze, I just completely like, I, you know, I find myself to be this light nerd. So I'm just geeking out over here thinking that, oh, look at that beautiful light. Um, so, uh, you know, I can get completely carried away when I see some, you know, beautiful light like this and I can just keep shooting until the light's almost gone. Um, so, for example, for this particular image, this was taken with my Sol 45, and um, this was taken, um, I wanted to make this more of a silhouette. head, and what I did here was I was trying to make it a double exposure, and we'll cover a little bit about multiple exposures and what I do uh, for multiple exposures with lens, baby lenses. Um, I was photographing my toddler, and obviously toddlers really don't stay in one place for a long period of time, right? Um, so what I did over here was um, I did two exposures, and um, for the first exposure, it was just my daughter with uh, this beautiful silhouette and just a little bit of rim light as well on this 
beautiful um, rainbow circular flare that comes with Sol 45. And then I just took an image of these lace curtains that I have and just combined them in Photoshop to create something so that I see a little bit of depth in the image as well. Perspective, right? Um, so when it comes to creating, um, you know, rule breaking or thinking out of the box or creating something that you feel um, more drawn to that has a little bit more of a mysterious feel or rather intriguing. That's just something that I really like to use um, quite a bit in my work. Um, you know, perspective is something that I like to play around with, whether it is creating images that make the viewer think that, oh, okay, what am I exactly looking at over here? I get the story, but um, maybe, you know, just it, it takes me to another dimension or another perspective uh, almost, right? And here, just using my hands and the body language over here, using my hand over here, I'm guiding the viewer um, this way to look at my face. This was a self-portrait. So I was guiding the viewer to look at my face over here. And then um, my focus was slightly off because I wanted it kind of on my eyes. But the image still works because you see, see this a little bit of this lace in the background and it really brings on that intrigue or that mystery feel because everything else in the image is in blur, right? So, so finding that right balance between using blur as well as focus and um, working with perspective and composition can really help you enhance your image. Okay, compositional elements, focusing on details. Um, I personally love to focus on details whenever I can, um, and especially with uh, fall details um, or with, you know, with your kiddos, with toddlers or flowers or whatever, you know, leaves, whatever you're photographing, focusing on details. Um, it's, it's, just, it's just a really beautiful way to um, really appreciate just those little things. Um, and with just with my daughter just holding this uh, leaf that she just found on the road or on the trail rather, um, I just loved to focus. I absolutely loved that I was focusing on the details of her fingers as well as this. And and that the, that the focus did not fall on her face and that created a little bit of um, mystery so that, you know, the viewer is looking at her fingers, um, looking at this beautiful color that's just guiding them to look at, okay, you know, uh, there's just a little bit of mystery going on behind the leaves over here. So think about how you can use your compositional elements um, to enhance the frame or the story in the image too. Um, exploring creative light play by deepening the shadows. So for me, uh, the Sol 45 as well as the Edge 35 have been an absolute amazing lenses um, because they have really just helped me to deepen the shadows that are already there in the frame and taking the focus away from it and then putting the focus back on my subject where I'm really intending the viewer to look at, right? Um, the left, I mean, there's a, just a lot of negative space on the left side of the frame, but it almost feels like, you know, just with this balance of light and dark, it feels like she's inviting the viewer to say, okay, come on in, let me just take you to my world. Um, and this uh, sprinkle of dust in the air just feels um, that it just adds to that element of magic as well. Um, and similar over here that, you know, there's a little bit of dust over here. Um, and, you know, when you, when you work on your exposure a little bit and observe the light, you're able to catch that dust in the air. Um, and I really like to sometimes use my, um, you know, H35 is just a perfect storytelling lens. Um, for this image here, I use my H35 because I was trying to focus on the moment as well as make it more of a storytelling approach of my daughter, for example, over here, just writing on the blackboard, right? Um, storytelling from a focus, uh, from a focus perspective. So here, um, this was a self-portrait of just my shadow and, um, 
using, uh, I think they used to solve 45, I can't exactly tell, or possibly edge. Um, here, I really just wanted to put the focus back only on the shadows, which was the, which was the main story, as well as um, where I wanted the, the viewer to look at without any distractions on the other side of the frame. Um, okay, so let's explore a little bit more about creative light. For example, here in this image, I used um, an Omni filter, um, which is more like a prism. Um, I mean, the, you know, if you've never used an Omni filter, um, it's not a lens, it's just an attachment on your existing lens. And what I absolutely love about it is when, you know, light hits on it in the right angle, you get this beautiful rainbow. Um, and I just absolutely love using um, you know, just that, that because I'm, I'm really a huge fan of minimalism and subtlety in my frame. So when everything else just feels clean, uh, calm and composed, that rainbow light just hitting my subject just feels like the perfect um, pop of color or pop of light that I really just, um, that just draws the viewer in. Okay. Use of textures. So for me, I am a huge fan of textures um, and especially natural textures or sometimes textures found all around us. Um, you know, for example, the image on the left side, I use some water to create a little bit of this water bokeh. And I have a behind the scenes of this image of how I created um, that will be coming up. And um, what I did there was basically, I just used some water spray on a window and did a double exposure uh, portrait of my daughter. And the image to the right, I basically did a double a multiple expo exposure in camera of some mountain range that was just right around there. And what I love the most about it is the the slight imperfection that you see with where um, the focus falls in certain areas and, and there's a little bit of blur around her. Um, so, and then you see a little bit of light flare around as well. Um, so that just that, that uh, really subtle mix of blur as well as focus is something that absolutely just draws me in to make the image uh, a bit more powerful and as well as showcase the natural textures um, that were in the frame over there. Um, some more examples of perspective. Um, in this image, um, I had my daughter facing the light at the window and I used to sole 45 over here because I really love how it deepens the shadows around you. And uh, I had a fog machine going over here. So she had a lot of streaming light that was just coming on her. And this image was shot with as a reflection of her, um, uh, reflection of her in the mirror. Um, so it's just a really neat perspective just to play around with. The top image was of a ballet dancer who was indoors and I believe I have used a Sol 45 for this image as well. And this one was an H35 and I absolutely loved focusing on the details of my hand as well as the details of the color and a little bit of the, um, the, the, um, the work on my dress. Okay, another thing that I absolutely love when, you know, when I'm using my lens, baby lenses, is um, the ability to create out of focus images that I would love to use as textures. Or sometimes they're just beautiful to look at. Um, so what I do, and especially with uh, Christmas around the corner, it just, they just really make this beautiful overlays that you can use for your own work. Um, so, you know, if you have Christmas tree lights, um, just use any, you know, absolutely all of these lenses will really just create different, um, a different bokeh and you can you can you know when you look at that I am a huge fan of bokeh so you will just automatically get drawn to it but these are just some different ways as to how I used um, out of focus in my images the first one was the H35 this was the H35 I believe this was the Sol and then this was the H35 as well although this is not entirely out of focus okay so something that I love to um, repeat to myself, something that's important to always keep in mind is that uh, perfectionism 
is really self-destructive simply because there's really no such thing as perfect, okay? Perfection is an unattainable goal because the more that you feel to desire um, to seek perfection, the more you're going to be in that struggle where you're constantly chasing perfection and it's just not there, right? And hence to me, picking up these lenses, especially when I feel overwhelmed, when I feel burnt out, when I feel exhausted of doing the same thing that I had been doing for, you know, especially when I'm shooting clients or other things, etc., etc., just gives me that ability to truly let go and create something that is different. And every time I can approach the same space that looks different, that feels different, um, as well as that possibly tells a different story, um, you know, so because even you, I mean, another person can pick up the same lens and shoot the same scene in a different way. But even you, when you pick up these lenses and it's you know i talk about these lenses but it's more about the feeling to me because you know otherwise if it's not that that um that feeling that it drives in me that i'm absolutely you know i love these dreamy images i love these um uh feel of this beautiful light that i see um i'm completely drawn to it all the time um and hence i really feel you know, I, I keep going back because I feel like I'm a new person when I'm able to pick up any of these lenses and um, create with uh, with them. Okay, uh, creative expression, right? Um, so something to think about is a couple of questions, and you know, just to, your to help you with your thought process is. What if you wanted to have the creative freedom to express just because, right? Whether you're a hobbyist, whether you're a pro photographer uh, creating for clients, or you're just genuinely curious as to what kind of magic can I really create with these um, with uh, a manual lens uh, like this? So what if you really get into that um, that freedom of expression Absolutely for nobody else, but just for yourself because your artist heart really desires it, right? Um, what if you wanted to make an impact just through our own personal experimentation? Um, your creative experimentation is really just unique to you. Um, fine art, storytelling, and rule breaking. And, you know, being a fine art photographer who is very light driven, um, the the way I would typically approach that is um, rules are really like your outline on a blank canvas. They these rules are super important, and they really just help you to get started, right? But as a creative, we take the liberty to create original work that really challenges these traditional rules but still respecting the rules that have been in place for centuries, right? So we don't want to create, you know, we, we know that, okay, this is the rule. This is, this is how I want to use the light. This is how I want to have my subject in the image. This is how I want to shoot indoors. So we are respecting the rules because they have been in place. And then we know the reason why these rules are there because they make sense. However, taking that liberty of being creative and breaking one rule sometimes while keeping other rules in place could really just be an extension of conventional photography while also enabling the artist to really experiment with his or her thoughts and ideas in the story while really just going beyond a simple photograph, right? So you're just trying, you know, and that's why I call it making magic indoors because, or rather just making magic, because you're really just taking an ordinary image and trying to find the beauty in something as simple as, you know, what you see every day might be really ordinary and simple, but you can still create magic with that something ordinary. Experimentation. Um, this is one of my favorite quotes, ever tried, ever failed. No matter, try again, fail again, fail better. <laughs> 
Um, right? So because I think sometimes when it comes to experimentation, when it comes to using manual lenses, we try, we fail, we don't get the focus where we want, we feel defeated, and then we just don't want to pick up pick up that lens again because we feel, oh, I just don't know what I'm doing, or I can really just never get the focus where I want it to be. Um, so even if you don't be successful in the very first attempt, or even if you're not successful in your 20th attempt, you know, you know, it's okay to put your lens down, but make sure to pick it up again and then try it again. So that way you're really just learning from your mistakes. Um, not really mistakes, I would call it experimentation, that's why, right? So you're really learning from your experiments and then you would know, okay, I think this is what the look or the style or this is what the really, the mood I'm really desiring in this particular image. When you are opening up yourself and accepting that idea that really nothing's perfect in life and, you know, no human being, even situation is ever going to be perfect, you really open up the possibility to grow as a human, as an artist, to really experiment. You really let in, you're able to let in the possibility of trying new things. Okay, so lastly, my favorite phrase that I really love to use all the time is don't shoot what it looks like but shoot what it feels like because that's really why true um, artistry is all about. Thank you for listening and I would love to take any questions. Hey everyone, I'm Jyotsna Bamidipati and I go by Joe and I wanted to take a little bit of time today to talk about my process of making magic indoors. So um, before we get started, I just wanted to introduce myself. Um, I have been a photographer uh, for about close to six years now, and um, my work is uh, lifestyle, but I really like the fine art approach um, in, um, in images that I create. And uh, I got really um, pulled into using uh, lens baby lenses, about uh, four years ago, um, when I stumbled across an ad, I think, for a Lens Baby Edge 80. And that was my very first lens that I had used for a Lens Baby lens. And to date, the Edge series have been my absolute favorite um, lenses from the Lens Baby lenses. Um, I do own uh, pretty much all the Lens Baby uh, lenses, the Edge series, the Sol, the Twist, and all of them. Um, and I use them really um, individually for uh, different reasons, for different looks, and for different um, variety of looks that I might be going for, um, or different modes, uh, etc. Um, my personal favorite uh, so far really has been the Edge series, especially because um, I really just love how the blur, uh, the smoothness of the blur just really helps to um, establish focus on the subject um, or on the main hero subject or the story that I want to focus on and everything else in the image really just falls neatly into blur. Um, while we just get into the presentation section over here, I'm going to be talking about um, how I use these lenses for um, creating different stories and we'll get into that and um, how I decide which lens to use at which point um, once we just get into that uh, section of the presentation. Um, just talking about making magic indoors, however, um, we, we, all of us, I think, um, you know, 2020 really just changed us. We spend so much time indoors. And I think um, since last year, um, you know, even though we're, it's 2021 and things are so much different as compared to last year, um, but the pandemic has really just left us all with that, um, with that thought that, you know, we, we can be indoors. We can, uh, create, um, images or create magic indoors. Um, all of us, you know, we spend, regardless, we spend so much time at our homes, in our apartments, in our, you know, houses, wherever we are. We spend so much time, whether it's, you know, in the mornings, um, whether we are getting ready to go to work in the evenings, once we are back from work, um, different times of the day over the weekends, 
Um, sure, we all love to go outside and spend time outdoors and, you know, it just feels refreshing. But we still spend so much time indoors and get so much done in our homes. And um, to me, I think sometimes that our homes are so close to us. That's where the stories really happen. Um, and sometimes I feel because we are in our home every single day, um, it, it just feels that we can lack inspiration. Um, and, you know, I personally really just love creating in my own home or trying to find these little um, new pockets of light or um, new space, not really new spaces, but new um uh, ways that the light hits a surface or the light, um, you know, enters uh, my living room or my bedroom um, because light is constantly changing, right? Something to keep in mind is that light is just constantly changing. It's very dynamic. It's not really uh, very static and it's constantly changing. Um, so keeping that in mind, I just really love to observe um, just how light enters different spaces in our homes and how it really just inspires us. And, um, you know, just creating indoors and using these spaces that we live in to tell stories is something that I absolutely love because uh, it's just really helped me seeing ordinary spaces in a really new light. So let's get started. So here I wanted to use my Edge 35 to take a couple of self-portraits so that I can utilize the light, the backlight, that was just so dreamy at that time of the day, as well as to get a few light flares in camera. By finding the right angle, as well as moving your camera, as well as your tripod around to find the best angle, as well as the best perspective, is really the key to make sure that you're really harnessing the light indoors, as well as making the best of composition when you're shooting indoors. And as you can see, it's just really a lot of going back and forth with my camera, especially when I take self-portraits to find the perfect angle and to find this perfect light flare that I really love in camera. Playing around with that last light of the day, especially when you see pockets of light like this around your home, um, try to make sure that you observe and take note of what you see around your space. Um, that could be upstairs in one of your rooms or it could be a tiny pocket of light or a sliver of light that you might notice and um, just Playing around with uh, shadows, um, could be shadows of your hands, could be shadows of um, the plants or objects in your space, opening up the curtains, opening up the windows, um, can really just help you to utilize that, that really warm, um, intense last light of the day that you see um, in your space, no matter how big or small um, your space actually is. In terms of my exposure settings, especially when I'm shooting with uh, shadows in mind, um, you just have to make sure that um, you expose for the highlights in the image and if you are standing in the pocket of light or maybe you're standing a little bit further away such that you're photographing only your shadow or your subject shadow, um, thinking about the storytelling aspect over here is also important. Um, 
once you get your light and your exposure settings um, right and you're you're all situated with that um, think about how you want to frame your subject with that pocket of light and um, utilize any um, scarves any objects um, or anything that you see around that could actually add to the whole story or the storytelling aspect of the image as well. So in this series of images, I really just wanted to um, photograph my daughter using that slight pocket of light or the slight sliver of light that you can actually see and i decided to use my sol 45 over here to um, just really focus only on the light when everything else in the frame really just falls into that deep shadows Okay, hey everyone, so um, here we have some backlight. Um, this is our master bedroom, and it's a lot of um, bold colors, but the light comes in here, uh, once you move from downstairs to upstairs, the light comes in here a little bit later in the day. So here I wanna try and photograph just a few of it, um, of her. So what I'm having her do is just more of a profile shot. So I'm having her just face the wind, face um, the wall over here, and uh, just get the light to hit her face, um, just beautifully, just like that. Try it again. I'm gonna move. So the more if you move your body physically a little bit, uh, six inches to the left, six inches to the right, or um, however you move. You could just get different kinds of light. You could get room light, you could get slow hits, uh, you could get just beautifully uh, exposed backlight images as well. So it all depends on um, your angle, your positioning, and your settings as well. Uh, so here, my intention is to go for uh, a slow hit. So, So I'm going to try to do a double exposure here. Can you just pour some water there? Yeah. Yeah, right there. Like very gently, a little bit, or maybe just sprinkle because it's all going to fall through. So maybe just take a little bit of your hands and see, or just like, you know, use, use your hand just to put it on that wall. Yes. It's a little bit messy, but it's a little bit watery and perfect. Yeah, that's it. Now we put this away. And then I'm just going to see if I can photograph um, just the texture here. Right? I just wish we didn't have that water bubble near your mouth. Maybe we could just, I could have angled it properly. Yeah. Do, can I just try it one more time? Yeah. So here, what I'm trying to do is just a double exposure. Um, so I am planning to um, take her image again as a silhouette. And then uh, we'll pour the water again to take the image off the texture over here. And then uh, see if you can create a really cool double exposure. Okay, so just go back and sit there. Thanks for your patience, Johnny. <laughs> 